Hey everyone, it's Tragic, and today I went on a little field trip uh, to a retro store in my area, and I wanted to kind of show it off to you. So first of all, let me apologize for the weird camera angle. I'm um, trying a new camera that's actually attached to my hat, and I didn't realize it was in this weird fisheye circle frame shot thing, so my apologies. But here we are at Sour Apple Gallery in Glendale, Arizona and hopefully you can see how cool it is here at the front door um, this shop has all kinds of retro kind of pop culture vintage stuff kind of focusing on the 80s and 90s they've got books games toys and cards and I'm just gonna take a look around the store kind of show off hopefully you get the gist Big rack of toys, Star Wars stuff. Pretty neat. I like Star Wars, but I'm really not trying to collect toys right now, so I'm kind of moving on from that. So here we go. I'm into some G.I. Joe. Here's a roadblock, but this is a non-original package, and that is something I'm really not looking for right now. Really interested in the original G.I. Joe figures. I don't mind a reproduction back, but I want the Joe to be original, so I'll be looking for something like that. Now in this case, we're some really nice older vintage toys, and including some loose G.I. Joes that I was interested in. Nice big smorgasbord of kind of classic toys in there. These patches were kind of cool. Basically like they look like wacky packages to me but they were in patch form so I've never seen those before. And on over here is what I'm kind of really interested in for this channel. Nice bit of non-sport card displays. Some of which I was interested in and some of which I didn't really need. These Garbage Pail Kids stickers are like puffy stickers. And I was kind of interested to get a hold of one of these. Stick on pictures. Yep, that was something I haven't seen yet. So I thought I'd go ahead and get one of these. Didn't think I needed Boris and Natasha. Some old baseball cards. You can get those pretty much anywhere. So I wasn't really looking for that. Now we've got some non-sport cards, which I thought I was the only one in the world that was into these. But here they are, still available. Uh, definitely need some Magnum cards. Sure, why not some Superman 3 cards as well? Maybe we'll open those later. I might come back for some Batman cards. I decided not to get any right now because I have opened them in the past on the, my other channel. They're still cool. These packs of Crow cards turned out to be a collectible game. So that caught my interest. I'll probably open those for my gaming purposes. Garbage Pail Kid button? Sure, why not? Yeah, I guess so. Loose packs of Garbage Pail Kids. Don't really need those. How about some Beetlejuice cards? I've seen these online and thought I didn't really need a whole box, but three packs, that's pretty decent. More Batman, maybe another time. Let's do some Bill and Ted's. And even some Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy cards, why not? Uh, 
Not what I'd do for now. Place is pretty cool. The guy who runs it said he's an artist and he actually drew a lot of the custom comic book covers that you see in the back there. There he is sorting some cards. Those turned out to be Garshville kids as well. He thought my hat camera was a little weird, so he chose not to be interviewed on camera. So I'm just looking around anyway. Had a case full of Pokemon, case full of non-sport, case full of some sports, and pretty much any other retro weird thing you can think of. This store had a lot of games, old Game Boy games and Nintendo games, so if you're into that kind of stuff. The owner seemed to be really into the Garbage Pail Kids. He even showed me some of his art that he had done and for sketch cards. Not official for tops, but they were pretty nice. I might have to go back and bug him to show them to me sometime. Yep, everything from Hot Wheels cars to Nintendo stuff to board games to Nightmare on Elm Street dolls. This was a pretty cool stop right here. Again, sorry for the weird lens. The case full of video games is pretty cool, but I don't really need any of that right now. And that about did it for my trip. Well, let's take a look at what I got in the bag next. All right, well, let's check out my haul from Sour Apple Gallery. Sour, Sour Apple Gallery is located in Peoria, Arizona. And just happened to stop by there and check it out and found some stuff I wanted. So let's take a look at what I, what's in the bag. We've got some Garfield Kids stick-on pictures some little kind of like puffy sticker things um, from looks like OS1 series Garfield Kids and uh, very interesting I don't I probably won't open these I'll just leave that sealed like that for now so I can figure out what to do with it at some point um, let's see did get um, some various non-sport card packs um, some of these I might open right now Superman 3 10 cards and one stick of bubble gum. So you've seen me open non-sport cards before. That's definitely part of what we do on this channel. We got some Beetlejuice cards. The ghost with the most. One, five cards and one glow sticker. Check those out as well. Uh, let's see. Sour Apple Gallery um, uh, business card. Check them out there. It's actually in Glendale, Arizona. If you're in the neighborhood, pop by. Pretty cool little shop as hopefully you got to see. Um, this, a uh, uh, couple of packs of The Crow, and these turned out, uh, as I look closely, to be a collectible card game. So I'll probably save these for my um, magic and card game channel. So maybe you'll see them pop up over on, over on Tragic MTG. Um, David was nice enough to throw in one of these buttons. He actually didn't charge me for this. Some of this stuff might just be... Um, hard for him to move. I don't know. <laughs> it was just a bonus for, for buying all the rest of this stuff. I got three packs of Magnum PI, um, which I definitely have been kind of had my eye on some of these for a while. And that was kind of why I wanted to pop into Sour Apple Gallery just to see if they had some of the non sport cards that I'm interested in. I may not necessarily want to buy an entire box of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy card uh, trading card packs. But I definitely want three of them to at least open up and uh, get the flavor of what it was like back then. Let's see. Ended up getting a, a Joe. I got a 1990 Tunnel Rat, which uh, I'm pretty sure I have the earlier version of Tunnel Rat. Um, so this was not necessarily one I needed, but definitely kind of liked him. Put the giant backpack there. What if these? Looks like they've got buttons. Might have like a sound effect that's probably needs a battery or something. He's got a nice big gun there. So, love G.I. Joe. Remind me to show off my Joe collection sometime. So there's that. And let's see, lastly in the bag, got some 
packs of Bill and Ted's most atypical movie cards. Hilarious. Bodacious trip. You win a trip to San Dimas, California. That's great. So uh, let's go ahead. What should we open? Let's open the Superman 3 trading cards. We'll save the rest for other rainy days. We might do something else. Uh, Superman 3, right? This is the one with Richard Pryor. Let's get into this. And I can sharpen my photography um, critic skills. There's some gum stuck onto this card. Oh my gosh. Yep, it's on there. It's been there for almost 40 years. When was Superman 3? Like 1983? That's what it says. So here's the gum card. The chemical plant disaster. Oh no. It's pretty disastrous. I mean, it's currently just a fire. I wonder how bad it got in the movie. There's like a fireman there. <laughs> so this has always been my thing with these movie cards from the 80s. Is the... Uh, the composition of the still frame that they choose to print on the card to me is a little lackluster. They could have done, they could have picked a different frame that was more exciting. And then you get a bit of the story there. Let's flip these over. We got a Superman sticker, Christopher Reeve just flying through the blue screen, and puzzles. Of course, definitely puzzles on the back there. There's uh, uh, Lois Lane off on vacation. So was that her bikini? been a long time since I've seen Superman 3. Yeah, Bermuda. She's going to go to Bermuda. That's pretty funny. The Way to Brad's Heart. <laughs> Richard Pryor with a giant hat. Man, I'm going to have to go back and watch this movie again. I do not remember that scene. And who is Brad? Just like the, was he a security guard that had to get, that Pryor had to get past? She was delivery. He got him drunk. Sure. Fair enough. Friends or foes. I, I remember this scene where he's just dresses like Patton and he's going on and on about chemicals and the chemicals were kryptonite, of course. And uh, Superman did not see that coming. So, should have known better. Disgraceful Superman. Yeah, after getting dosed with kryptonite, he like, goes on a bender and he wrecks like a bar and stuff. I, I remember that scene quite a bit from when I was a kid watching this. The plan of Superman. What was his plan? I don't remember. I guess you could read it right there if you want. Probably won't. Goodness at the crossroads. Okay. Goodness. Synthetic synthetic kryptonite. Ah, I didn't know about that. An evil Superman. Yeah, he like splits into two Supermen. And then they kind of f they fight all over this junkyard. It was kind of a pretty cool sequence. A courageous photographer. Is that Jimmy Olsen, I guess? Yeah, sure enough. Jimmy Olsen is a photographer, sure. A dapper Clark Kent. Sure enough. All right, let's get through these. Superman 3. So were there Superman 1 and 2 cards? I would just kind of imagine. Just It seems like that was just the thing. Is every big movie gets a trading card set in the 80s. So here's a miscut. Is that a thing with these? Is this like a super rare uh, error card that's worth like a million bucks? The checklist was not cut properly. Hero, once again, he overcomes the kryptonite problem and moves on with his life into the fray. So, and of course, in the 80s, like the special effects were not where they were in the later in the 2000s stuff. So, you get a lot of action sequences of Superman on the ground, I think, with these movies. And uh, some flying around and like on buildings and stuff, but. Nowhere near like what Superman Returns or Man of Steel they would have been capable to do with the later Superman movies. Lana Lang, which I think isn't, okay, here you go. Test me on this, super nerd here. That actress that played Lana Lang, I believe went on to play Martha Kent in the Smallville TV show. Am I wrong or am I right? Comment down below. Confronting his foes, I don't know her name. I don't think it would say it here either. But I'm um, pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Confronting his foes. Yeah, so I remember this scene at the end. It's Luthor and, like, I guess maybe this lady. And the, like, the, the machine that they make, it, like, grabs her and pulls her in. I remember being kind of scared of that when I was a little kid. Vera Webster. There's a sticker of Superman using his super breath. And some puzzle stuff on the back. Ricky in the wheat fields. Who the heck is Ricky? I don't remember Ricky. Who's Ricky in the 
Superman show, Ricky Bobby. Goodness, triumphant. He's able to punch like some tires. Okay. In search of Ross Webster. Who was Ross Webster? Was that the Richard Pryor character? No, nope, I don't remember. Clark to the rescue. At the bowling alley. Sure. And Ricky. Oh, that's Ricky all grown up. So Ricky is a kid and Ricky is a grown up. Oh, I forgot. Be a superstar, say no to drugs. Still smart. Yeah, honestly, I cannot, can't argue with that. Um, okay, we got slide to safety. I gotta deal with this gum, actually. Hold on. The computer attacks. The ultimate computer scheme, yeah. There it is. She looks familiar, too, on the left. Um, hmm, it'll come to me, maybe. Maybe not. Wait, is that... No, I don't know. <laughs> the computer attacks. Yeah, it just like grabs him and chokes him. But he gets away. A Gus Gorman... As Gus Gorman arrives in the cavern, Ross and Vera Webster continue their electronic assault. I thought Lex Luthor was in this one as well. Gus tries to convince Superman that he was forced into a life of crime, but at the moment, our crime-fighting hero is having troubles of his own. Yep. Yep, definitely. Dastardly nemesis. You can tell that he's <clears throat> evil Superman by the way he juts his jaw out slightly. Real Superman would never do that. Slide to safety. Sure. Terror of the Thresher. I mean, okay. Was there a kid in the way? I guess that must have been it. Like, just like move him aside. You don't have to wreck the Thresher, though, do you? It causes a bunch of damage. It's always been my thing about Superman. Like, he tries to get the fight to leave the city, but it never can, so they always end up just destroying, like, every building. There we go. The puzzle is flying with Richard Pryor. That's funny. And, yeah, it looks like some kryptonite rays are getting him. The sticker of a Smallville um, sweater. Clark Kent is getting put into the trash compactor at the junkyard, I think. Gus Gorman turns on his creation. Kind of looks like he's smashing it. Is that who Gus is, the Richard Pryor guy? Yeah. He removes the power screw. He turn. Oh, he turns on. He didn't turn it on. He turned on it. Okay. Grammar. Astounding ice breath. We got a duplicate. A newfound friend. That must be Ricky. But I thought Ricky is like all grown up. I can't keep up. A job for Superman. It certainly is. Okay. Well, that was just some Superman 3 cards to go along with uh, my trip to Sour Apple Gallery. Check it out if you're ever in Glendale. And I will be opening these on another video, more than likely, um, as well as more Garbage Pail Kids in my quest to cr uh, complete a set of Garbage Pail Kids and whatever else I'm into. Catch you later.